Hello and welcome back to the channel. You can see that I'm using a slightly different format or presentation method than I have used before. I'm actually using the PC with some video capture software. But I also thought, well, you know, I can talk to the audience a little bit, so I'm recording that as well. So I'm just experimenting a little bit and you know, we'll see what the reaction is. If you like this method better than the, you know, video of me taking a uh, pen to paper, let me know. And if you prefer this one, yeah. let me know there too. We'll, we'll see where this takes us. In the previous video, I had gone over some of the general characteristics of a comparator. So it came to me that why not do a series on the application of comparators? So this time around, I'm going to do some work on the non-inverting comparator. The next one I hope to do is inverting comparators, then RC oscillators, and then perhaps something on the window comparator. So we're going to have a total of four videos on those devices alone. So the last time around, we used an LM393, which is a dual comparator. And we had to disable some of the leads. We used a single output. And these are open collector devices. So we have to put a resistor on the output to VCC to actually get a circuit to work. This time we're going to use a TLV3201 and it is a push-pull comparator so no output resistor required and it is a, a micro power or very low power device. So I thought I'd use both of these throughout the videos just to, to get a comparison and, and get everybody exposed to both of those. So this time around we're going to be dealing with hysteresis. And you've probably seen the hysteresis curve before. This goes way back to the days of the studies on magnetism. And we have the, the magnetizing force that's shown here in HM. And the, the flux density, I just love saying that, <laughs> and the flux density on, on this axis. So the magnetizing force, the stronger it gets, well, we start out actually at, at the center point zero and we go up the first time. But when we start dropping the magnetizing force, the drop isn't instantaneous. It actually goes off on a tangent or a curve like this. And then when we go back and increase the magnetizing force, the density goes up slowly like this until we get to saturation. So we have a positive saturation point and a negative saturation point. So this gives us a area of hysteresis in which you know we we set up some it's got inertia built into it it's not going to trip at points other than the ones that are defined by this particular curve which would be for a particular device or magnet of course so this is the original point that i can find for hysteresis and of course you can see that this is the symbol and there's a there's a close resemblance this sort of looks like a bird i guess but this is the, the symbol for, for hysteresis. So why do we want hysteresis in our circuit? If you look at these four image captures that I did, you can see a sine wave of 1 kHz, and this is 4 volts peak to peak, and I have actually overlaid some noise onto it. This image is a capture of a circuit without any hysteresis. You can see that the edges on this are kind of muddy and, and skewed, and that's because we have multiple trigger points. So every time it's covering or going across a threshold, the, the comparison between the, or the inverting and the non-inverting inputs, we, we're getting multiple triggers, and we're getting the same thing when it drops and some overshoots too, but that's because of the board, not because of the comparator. If I zoomed in on one of these sections, and that was this area, you can see how many times this is triggered. If you're trying to clock something, you definitely don't want to have this kind of mess coming into your circuit. You've clocked it uh, uh, quite a bit. Now this is the same circuit, but I've added hysteresis to it. And you can see that the waveform looks pretty clean. Again, this is the original AC waveform with some noise added to it. And zooming in to the, the leading edge, you can see that there's only one pulse, 
and it is nice and clean and level. So hysteresis is going to be used to clean up what is otherwise a pretty nasty looking signal. On our non-inverting device, we're going to have three points. We're going to have a negative trip voltage, and this could also be called a Thevenin voltage. We're going to have a reference value and a positive trip. So this is the Thevenin positive value. The hysteresis band is actually between those trip points. So what's going to happen with this is we're going to have an input on the, on the non-inverting side. Once it reaches that trip voltage, it's going to cause the signal out to go high. Now it doesn't matter how many times or how much noise we have on this point, once it gets to that trip point, it trips, it stays tripped, it doesn't uh, trip again if the voltage drops below V trip plus. Signal continues to rise, and it doesn't trip to the negative until we get to the negative trip voltage. The first time it trips there, it stays negative. It's not going to trip again because it can't until it gets back to the positive trip voltage. So that's where we have that positive, uh, that voltage hysteresis. And then we have the hysteresis band going across this way. Now by setting the trip voltages to different points, we can actually narrow the, the hysteresis band so if we said, okay, let's make negative trip and put it right about here, move our reference point up accordingly, of course, and now it's going to trip at this point and our low is going to happen here. So we've narrowed the band down or the neg narrowed the pulse down. The way the circuit will work is kind of demonstrated here. We have voltage out low and voltage out high and of course, VN. So as VN increases, nothing will happen until we get to that positive Thevenin voltage or threshold voltage. And once we get to that, it's going to go high and it's going to stay high, a 5 volt output, until such time as we get to the negative Thevenin voltage or trip voltage. Once we get to that negative voltage, the circuit goes low and the process can repeat all over again. Now when it goes low, of course, our waveform is going to go down, we're going to drop back this way, and then the whole process repeats again. Get to the positive trip, go high, stay high until we get to the negative trip, stay low, and then repeat the process. So the circuit that we're going to be working with is shown here, and I've already done the calculations. I'm going to go over those in the next uh, slide and show you how I came up with them. And it's probably the simplest method that I could think of to actually get a pretty good non-inverting comparator set up. We're going to use the TLV3201 Texas Instruments, and we're going to set up a 2.917 volt DC reference, 4 volt peak to peak voltage with a 2 volt DC offset. We don't want to put negative voltages into these and we're going to have a feedback resistor of 1.5 meg and 300k for the input resistor. Output's going to be here of course and I would probably put a resistor on here on the order of 4.7k or 5.1k. You really don't need to but to put a load on it maybe get a little bit more honest interpretation I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to show you how I came up with this value and these two values in in a short time. This is the Pinout of the device, same hookups, 2.917 volt DC reference, 5 volts for VCC, of course one ground, and our feedback resistor and our input resistor. So let's go over the calculations real quick and see if what I actually came up with here is correct. Well, step one is going to require us to determine how much hysteresis voltage that we want. And to make the calculations really simple, I decided that it's just going to be one volt. So one volt for our hysteresis voltage. And then I want to select a trip voltage. Based on a four volt peak to peak input with a two volt DC offset, I decided that I would like to have trip voltage of of three volts. So this would be the same thing, or really very close to the same thing as our reference voltage. You're going to see why it's not exactly the same shortly. 
we need to calculate the resistor ratio to get the hysteresis based on the voltage out high and the voltage out low that we have. So our voltage out high, we're going to assume it's going to be 5 volts, and our voltage out low is going to be 0 volts. Now I'm assuming that it's going to be 0 volts. It might be something else. It really isn't that important if it was, for example, 110 millivolts as it would be in a, in a 393. So this will work just fine. So now I need to include the hysteresis. And since I'm using just one volt for that, my calculation is very simple. So I have a 5 to 1 ratio for RF to RI. So I went into my bag of resistors and decided that I wanted something to be a something that drew very little current because we're using a device that is really a, a, a current sipper. It doesn't use them very much at all. So why put on low value resistors when you're trying to keep everything at a very low power? So I decided 1.5 meg. Divide that by 5 since the ratio has to be 5 to 1. And we would end up getting 300 K ohms for the value of R. So these resistors were selected. Now we need to calculate the reference voltage. Now the reference voltage is not going to be exactly the same as our, our trip voltage because we have to take into account something called the feedback fraction. The feedback fraction is that voltage that's fed from the output back into the non-inverting input. And that's based on the ratio of these resistors and the voltage range that we have. And then this is the actual trip voltage that we are using through a feedback resistor and or a voltage divider. So putting all of that in, we are going to get 3.6 meg for the lower part of the equation. So Ri plus Rf, so 1.5 meg plus 300k is 1.8 times 2, 3.6. 300 k times the voltage out high minus the voltage out low will be 5 volts plus 1.5 meg over 1.8 meg, 3 volts. Well, this is going to give us 2.5 volts. And this is going to give us 0 0.417 volts. So we're having a feedback fraction or a feedback voltage of 4.17 volts on that positive value. Add the two together and we get 2.917 volts. Now this is what we're actually going to put into our inverting input as the reference voltage. We can calculate our thevenin voltages or our trip voltage by using these equations. And <laughs> you really don't need to, but you can do it just to double check your work. I find it easier, you know, if I trust my work, just to say take the trip voltage, which I said was 3 volts, and then subtract one half of my hysteresis voltage, so one half times one, so I'll get 2.5 volts, and of course this one's going to be 3 plus one half times one, and I get 3.5. So that's the one voltage with the trip value being in the center. So I should trip at 2.5 and I should trip at right around 3.5. If you want to go into a little bit more detail, you can use this equation and you're going to have that 300 K over 1.8 meg ohms times our reference voltage of 2.917 minus 0 plus 2.917. And lo and behold, when you do the math on this, you come out with almost exactly 3.5 volts. You're only a few millivolts off. 
And the same thing is going to hold true for this part of the equation. So I'm just going to hit skip that. And if you want to, you can work it out on your own. But you should come up very, very close to 2.5 volts. So those are the equations. This is about the simplest way that I thought about or thought of that would be able to do a, a bit of work or a circuit for a non-inverting comparator. Just needs two resistors and a reference voltage. Now this reference voltage, you, you can use a potentiometer and just place it between VCC and ground. So you've got the two leads there, variable potentiometer, and then adjust this to get 2.917 volts so you don't really need a, another power supply just use a, a simple voltage divider and of course use a large value if you can find one to minimize the current draw. So going back to our circuit you can see how I came up with all of the values for this device. So we have 2.917 volts for our reference, 300K, 1.5, and of course this was the starting parameter which you know, led to the decisions that I, that I had made about uh, how much hysteresis I wanted and what my trip point was. So now we can go ahead and look at the circuit and start testing it. Here's the circuit that we just did the calculations for. This is the 300K. Here's our 1.5 between the output and the non-inverting input. A 4.7K ohm resistor at the output. VCC is going to be on pin 6. Pin 5 is unconnected. And this is going to be our inverting input. I'm going to hook a power supply up to it and adjust it for 2.917. And to start off with, I'm going to make an adjustment using a potentiometer for the trip voltage. So this is hooked up at the input to RI. So as I adjust this between VCC and ground, we should be able to see the point at which it trips at and determine how accurate we are. So we're looking for 2.5 and 3.5 volts. After that, we'll hook up the function generator, put some noise into it with a nice sawtooth wave and see how well it gets rid of any any noise from our output which we'll monitor there. My circuit hookup is complete. I'm monitoring the voltage that's going into the non-inverting input. I have a 2.917 reference going into the inverting input and the supplies are shown here. So there's the 2.917 for inverting the five volt power supply and this is the voltage that's on my potentiometer right now. And here is the output. So I'm going to start turning the voltage up. And just when it trips, so let's see if I can get both things into the screen at the same time. And it looks like it's going to be a little tough, but let's see. Both of them at the same time. Get the adjustment. Just right. Right now I'm looking at two and a half volts on the multimeter. And hopefully it trips somewhere relatively close to 3.5 volts. Getting closer. And just about there. There we go. And here's the voltage that is showing up on my DMM. So now let's do the same thing for the negative side. So it shouldn't drop until we get to 2.5 volts. And again, making the adjustments. Uh, that went a little bit too fast. I wasn't watching. There we go. Start that again. Go back. So we just got down to 3 volts and you can see, see that the output is still high. 
and there we go and the trip point was 2.588 so that looks pretty good now let's check it out for how well the hysteresis works to get rid of some noise so i'm going to set my function generator to put out four volts peak to peak so we want an amplitude of four volts peak to peak with an offset of two volts dc and we want to add noise to the signal and I'm going to add 10% noise to the output of the function generator. So let me get that hooked up and we'll take a look at that on the scope. Now hookup is now complete and I still have 5 volts VCC 2.917. I have the noise set at 10% on a ramp. 4 volts, 2 volts peak to peak. And this is the output and you can see that it is nice and clean so you can see the noise here and our input or output from the comparator is nice and clean so if I remove the noise from the circuit and come back down here you can see the noise has been removed we've got a little bit of a jitter on the back end and the front end and this is actually coming from the board itself and I can show you that if I remove that filter capacitor in just a second of course that doesn't work because the output just became disconnected there we go and there we go so you can see that the noise definitely goes to hell in a handbasket when when I uh, when I remove the filter cap so it's being picked up off of the board so that's not from our our circuit proper so there it is with out any noise put the noise back in and I'm going to do a single shot just so we can get a nice clean one and there it is put the take the noise back out and let's do a single shot on that too and there you go what you can also see is that we're at one volt per division and both of these are at the same point so we have one two three roughly looks like about 3.4 volts for the positive trigger and the negative trigger is one two and about 2.4 or 2.5 volts so they're triggering at the right point as well so that is how a non-inverting comparator can be set up with a couple of resistors and a reference voltage and remember you don't have to set up a external voltage source to get 2.97 you can just use a a potentiometer of course using one like that is going to be pretty damn hard to get it exactly right so you might want to use something a little bit more precise so that's it thanks again for joining me and until next time take care